Hello family, how are you doing on this wonderful night tonight? Preparing and getting ready to go to work. So we're going to dive right in. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory, Father, all the honor and all the praise. For allowing us yet another day, Lord God. Another day to magnify your name. Another day to exalt you. Another day to thank you that we are clothed in our right mind, Lord God. Thanking you for peace tonight, Lord God. Thanking you for joy, unspeakable joy and full of glory. Teach us, Lord God, how to war. Teach us, Lord God, to use our weaponry, Lord God. Teach us to discern, Lord God, your spirit. You said in your word, Father. That your children hear your voice and only your voice will they obey. Not another voice they will obey God. So teach us how to discern those things that we need to discern. And cause us not to be ignorant of Satan devices, Father. We thank you tonight for wisdom, Lord God. You said to get wisdom and knowledge and all of our getting to get understanding. So we ask you for understanding tonight, Lord God. As we learn how to war in the spirit and to take back what the enemy has stolen from us, Father. So, Lord, we repent of any sins, knowingly and unknowingly, Lord God. We ask you to search our hearts, try our thoughts, making sure that they're aligned with your word, your will, and your way, Father. And Father, we put on the whole armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt that's God about with truth, our feet that shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And Father, the sword of the Spirit, which is the true living word of God, and the shield of faith, which is used to quench every dart they may try to come our way. Because we understand that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And that when you, Father, are for us, who can be against us. Now, Father, I ask you to let me decrease as you increase. And where my ability ends, let yours kick in. And Father God, I thank you that this video will find who it needs to find and bless who it needs to bless. As we seal this prayer with the precious blood of the Lamb and read your word, we thank you that your spirit will be evidently so. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you all the glory as we bind the attacks of the enemy that will try to hinder, stop, or block the word from going forth, Lord God. We take authority over any demonic spirit or demonic activity right now. We send it to the pits of hell to await judgment. In the matchless name of Jesus, we give you praise. We seal it up with the blood of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hello, family. I hope you had a wonderful day on today because I certainly did. I was able to spend time with family as always cooking, feasting, and eating. Of course, I ate too much, but I just give God the glory for family. It's nothing like family. So I want you to cherish yours. And if you are having problems in your marriage, get before the Father. And fight for it like your very life depended on it. Don't throw in the towel. God loves covenant and he loved family. He created family before he created the church. So even with children, you know, just make sure you cover them in, your, in the blood and show forth your love to your children. And don't show partiality. One is not better than the other. One may be acting out more than the other, but they are still your children and you should love them the same and they shouldn't feel like you have partiality because see in the kingdom of God, God do not show forth any type of partiality. So we're going to talk about David tonight. You see, because David was stripped. Remember we talked about that on yesterday when we dealt with warfare, when God began to show us about warfare and you know, how David came and his whole life was disrupted, right? So let's feast in right quick and dive in. I'm in 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. I'm just going to read a few verses. Not going to keep you long because I know you're trying to get ready for the week. 
All right, so we're going to start. It's 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. And David inquired, I'm on eight verse, at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Let me, wait, let me go up to the fifth verse. And David, I'm trying to get it where we can just lay a foundation. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start in verse 1. Okay? And it came to pass when David and his men would come to Ziklag on the third day. That the, Am the Amalek, like, the Amalekis, you know, just forgive me. Uh, these words are sometimes tongue twisters. Had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziglag, and burned it with fire, and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away, and went on their way. Okay, so they, they seized them. They didn't hurt them or uh, anything like that. They just went in, in, in the camp, in David's camp, and took what belonged to David. So listen up. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept, until they had no more power to weep. You know, can you imagine that? To return and everything you own is just burnt to the ground. Everything you work for has been stripped. You you no longer have your possessions. You no longer have your home. You no longer have a place to lay your head. And they said they wept until they just had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive. Ahinoam, the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him. Because now, not only do he come home and find everything gone, all of his possessions, all of his his fellow men, all of that stuff is just gone. And now they're blaming David. They want to stone him. Wow. Wow. David was dealing with a lot. Let's keep going. Because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. He went and sought the Lord. Everything, he had lost everything. All the people were coming up against him. They threatened to kill him. What did he do? He sought the Lord. Keep listening. Powerful. He encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. And David said to Abatha, the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee. Bring me thither the ephod. And Abatha brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? Because now he mad. And he know once he go in, he was going to get his stuff back. And he wasn't coming back until he got it. But he still needed God. Permission. Not only his permission, he needed God to go with him. He said, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him. Listen to what God told David. Pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them. And without fear... Recover all. What has the enemy. 
taken from you and is holding it captive. God told David, after David encouraged himself and sought the Lord, Lord, shall I pursue? God said, you shall pursue. Not only shall you pursue, but you will overtake them and surely you will recover all. So family, whatever it is that the enemy is holding captive, you have the power from on high to pursue in the spirit. God will never leave or forsaken us. He will guide us into all truth. Do you believe that on tonight? You see, because what I know is greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. When God is for us, family, who can be against us? He will give us hands to war and fingers to fight. Some things do not come out but by way of fasting and praying. God said we can come and reason with him, reminding him of his word. God gave David a direct order. Then he not only gave him a direct order, he told him what the outcome would be. Same God. He changed not. So I want to encourage you as you get ready for work this week. Keep David on your mind. The things that he lost. And I want to ask you to read 1 Samuel the 30th chapter. Read the whole chapter. Feast on the word. Let God speak to you. Let God show you how to go and get your family members. Let God show you how to turn a bad situation into a victory tonight. You see, because we are the head and not the tail. We are above only and not beneath. We can declare World War III on the enemy and come out smelling like a rose and come out tried by fire, showing forth as pure gold. That flawless diamond. That's what you are. So family, I want to urge you. Put God first. Get instructions from heaven. Test the spirit by the spirit. Making sure that it's of God. Ask God.
God for the spirit of discernment. Because you know, God is going to be using people that we never thought he would use. Might not be the one in the three-piece suit. Might be the one with the tats all over their face. God been dealing with me about who he going to use. That's why you need the spirit of God and the spirit of discernment. Because you see, that one with those tattoos and, you know, the, the life that they may have lived. They didn't stare at hell in the face. They lived among the heathen and the sinners and the devil himself. Who better to fight and win? Then the one has escaped and beat. But you must know the Spirit of God. You know, the Word of God tells us be careful how you entertain a stranger. You may be entertaining an angel unaware. And see, we are living in some perilous times. We are living in some times that you better know that you know that you know. Don't say, mm, I think, uh, maybe, sort of. No, you better know that you know. And be sure that you know what you know. Because the word of God says, the very elect can be deceived. I know I'm not quoting that just right, but look it up. So, I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how much word you know. Make sure you're walking in the spirit of discernment. Because God will give you divine instructions of what to do, how to do, when to do. So, remember David. The enemy came into his camp. Took his daughters, his sons, and his wives and held them captive. They seized them. But it's time for us as Christians to go get our stuff. If it's your marriage and you know that's your spouse, take back what the enemy has stolen. If it's your health, can take that back as well. By his stripes, you'll heal, you know. If it's your finances, make sure you're doing your part. And if you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing with your finances, you can take back that too. Because the word of God says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest be in help. I wish above all things, he said, that thou mayest be in help. That you, and he wants your soul to prosper as well. So as I said, I'm not going to stay on here long. But we are in pursuit of the enemy. The word of God, the will of God, and the way of God. World War Three. We declare war on the enemy, taking back what the devil has stolen. And remember, no more being timid. The Bible said we can come boldly 
before the throne of grace, making our prayer requests and petitions known unto God, who is faithful and just to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think, according to the power that working on the inside of us. Are you endowed with power from on high? Are you walking in that dunamis power? God is waiting for you to surrender all, to open your mouth wide so he may feel it. The violent ones shall take it by force. For the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent ones shall take it by force. We command in our stuff bag. We command in our life bag. The weapons of our warfare. They are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The strongholds must come down. We already have the victory. We're no longer victims. We are victims. Say that with me. I am no longer a victim, but I am a victor. I am more than a conqueror. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I am blessed coming in and blessed going out. I am the righteousness of Christ. My father is the true and the living God. My elder brother is seated upon the right hand of the Father making intercession for us day and night. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, lead, guide, and direct us. The blood of Jesus covers us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We've already put on the whole arm of God that we may be able to withstand in the evil day. Go back and get your stuff. Take back what the enemy has stolen. I want you to have an amazing week. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We go in faith with nothing wavering. That we already have won. The gates of hell shall not prevail. When the enemy comes in like a flood. The spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against them. Yes, he will. I love you, family. I want you to have an amazing night. Let your sweet be sweet. Let God minister to you. And I look forward to coming back on here as God allows. You pray for me as I pray for you. So we will be praying for one another. Keep in mind. Pursue. I love you so much. And guess what? The best is what? Yet to come.